Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to write a restaurant review, which is the next composition that you will have to submit. The instructions are on pages 89 to 91 of your textbook, and there is an example of a restaurant review on page 72. A restaurant review, similar to a book review or a movie review, is where you express your opinion of a particular restaurant, as opposed to a book or a movie. Just like there are professional film critics, there are people whose job it is to write restaurant reviews for newspapers or magazines. But what makes restaurant reviews special is that many people write these, unlike book reviews perhaps, just for fun. That explains the popularity of websites like Yelp in the US or Open Rice in Hong Kong. When people dine out and have a good experience, they want to share that experience with others. Conversely, if they have a bad experience, they want to share that too to warn their friends not to make the mistake of going to that particular restaurant. That's why people enjoy reading restaurant reviews as much as others enjoy writing them. Not everyone enjoys reading books necessarily, uh, that's just reality, but one thing we all have in common as human beings is that we need to eat in order to survive. And in a city as big as Hong Kong, where there are so many restaurants to choose from, I'm sure we've all had the experience of dining out from time to time. So where to begin? As always, your first paragraph will be your introduction. Introduce your readers to the name of the restaurant and tell them where it is located. You can also answer some basic questions like, does the restaurant specialize in a particular kind of food? In Hong Kong, of course, there are many Chinese restaurants. There are also numerous uh, Western restaurants and a multitude of restaurants specializing in food from other countries, such as Japanese food, Korean food, Thai food, Indian food, and so on. If it's relevant, you can also mention when you happen to dine at this particular restaurant, uh, what time of day, what day of the week. Sometimes these details make a difference. Before you start writing about the food itself, which will obviously be the main focus of your review, there are a couple of other things that are worth paying attention to. First is the decor. Now, what do I mean by that? By decor, think decorations. It's also the first five letters of that word. Basically, it includes everything from the furniture to the pictures on the wall. Is it a comfortable environment? Is it a place that you would enjoy spending time in, as opposed to just eating something quickly and getting out as soon as possible? Obviously, cleanliness is a big factor. No one wants to eat in a restaurant where the floor and tables are dirty. But take note of the decorations as well, and decide if the owners of the restaurant have put enough effort into making their establishment look nice and inviting. The second thing you want to pay attention to is the service. This can often make the difference between a good dining experience and a bad one, just as much as the food itself, so your readers will want to know about it. Were the people who worked in the restaurant friendly and polite, or were they rude? Next we get to the food itself, and this will be the main point of interest. This should be different for everyone, depending on which restaurant you choose. If it's a Western restaurant, for instance, the menu will likely be divided into three sections. Appetizers, main course, and dessert. Appetizers, also called starters, are smaller portions that are typically ordered at the beginning of a meal. Uh, soup and salad are popular appetizers, but they can also include things like chicken wings as well. The main course will be the largest plate in the most substantial portion of your meal, Again, depending upon which type of restaurant you're in, examples could include steak, chicken, fish, or pasta. The third and final part of the menu will be for dessert. Now, that's not to say you have to order something from all three courses. Uh, for instance, I rarely order dessert because I'm usually full by the time I finish my main course. I'll also skip the appetizer if I'm not particularly hungry and just get straight to the main course. Or, sometimes what people do in that case is order a few items from the appetizer's menu to share with one another and skip the main course altogether. The restaurant menu, by the way, can also provide you with some useful vocabulary to describe your meal. But it's up to you to decide whether or not the descriptions on the menu are accurate. Just like the photos may look completely different from what arrives on the plate, 
Sometimes a nicely worded description on a menu can get your hopes up, and the food that comes out of the kitchen just doesn't live up to it. If you are satisfied with your meal, be sure to tell your readers in detail why that was the case. Uh, conversely, if you are disappointed with your food, be specific about what the problems were and how they could have been improved. The strength of your writing will often depend on the correct choice of adjectives and adverbs. Avoid simple words like yummy that are overused, and select a word like delicious instead. Uh, succulent and delectable are other examples of adjectives to describe food that tastes good. As always, your final paragraph will be your conclusion. You don't need to introduce any new information here. Just sum up your main points and give your overall impression of the restaurant. Is it a place you would recommend your friends go to try for themselves? Is it a place you would like to return to yourself at some point in the future? And why or why not? These are my tips for writing a restaurant review. I hope you found them useful, and I look forward to reading your submissions.